It is 2 a.m. in New York, 7 in London, and 4 on a Friday afternoon here in Seoul. I'm Moon Gon Young. This is Arirang Korea's only global network. Now, we got reports out of North Korea earlier this Friday morning that Chang Song Tech has been executed following a short military trial that found him guilty of treason. The once powerful uncle of leader Kim Jong un, stripped of his power just a few days ago, was accused of forming a faction against the state and harboring his own political ambitions. Arirang News' Jim Young Gil has our top story. The North Korean Central News Agency reported early Friday that the uncle of leader Kim Jong Un had been executed. Chang Song Tech, long considered as the country's second most powerful man and Kim Jong Un's former mentor, was sentenced to death for being a traitor who had tried to overthrow the state. Chang was executed after admitting to his crimes before a military tribunal on Thursday, the North said in a statement released by its state-run news agency. The execution comes just four days after Chang was dramatically removed from a Workers' Party session by armed guards. According to the agency's statement, Kim Jong-un accused Chang and his allies of double-dealing behind the scenes, dreaming different dreams and selling the country's resources at cheap prices, thereby threatening North Korea's economic development. Chang's removal marks the most significant shakeup in two years under Kim's leadership and suggests the North young leader is willing to go after his rivals publicly and in ways more secretive than his father Kim Jong il ever did. The North has never so explicitly described the crimes or the punishment of a high level official before. Pyongyang labeled Chang a traitor to the nation and worse than a dog in his report. Chang was married to Kim Jong un's aunt, Kim Kyung hee, the young sister of late leader Kim Jong il. Kim Young il, Arirang News. Now, the chairman of the National Assembly's Intelligence Committee here in Seoul has given out details of the manner in which the once powerful uncle of North Korean leader Kim Jong un, Chang Song tae was executed. Let's go live to our National Assembly correspondent, Kim Yeon ji. Yeon ji, uh, what did the chairman say? Hi, Kan Young. Intelligence Committee Chairman Seo Sang Gi of the ruling Senuri Party told reporters this morning that Chang Song Tech is believed to have been killed with a machine gun, the same kind used when his two closest aides were executed a few days earlier. Representatives have said the abrupt execution of Chang, once the second in command in North Korea, is believed to be aimed at striking terror in his followers and therefore leaving as little room as possible for a rebellion. Here, take a listen to what Rep Representative Seo said at the briefing. This incident proves how Kim Jong-un's power base is weaker than that of his late father Kim Jong-il. The sudden execution of Chang Song Tech seems aimed at shutting out any internal controversy that may arise surrounding Chang. Representative Seo added that Chang was accused of attempting to overthrow the Kim Jong un regime and extend his power over the military for that purpose. He said the North Korean regime also accused Chang of colluding with foreign powers to present himself as a reformer, and in so doing, it tried to shift responsibility for a failure of governance and a backward economy away from the regime and onto Chang. Representative Seo speculated that the chance that North Korea will move towards reform is even smaller now and that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is trying to strengthen his rule of terror. He also warned that North Korea could launch a provocation in an attempt to shift, uh, turn people's attention away from its internal problems and so called for heightened military vigilance in South Korea. Now, Yeonji, we know that the Parliament's Foreign Affairs and Unification Committee convened an emergency meeting this afternoon. Um, are they in discussions right now? Yes, they are. Uh, Unification Minister Liu gil who is attending the meeting right now, told lawmakers that current efforts to reopen the inter-Korean Kaesong industrial complex are going forward according to plan. While the, uh, he said that... 
While the execution of Chang Seung Tae came as a shock, the minister said he does not believe it will have major implications for Seoul's North Korea policy or inter Korean relations. The unification minister stressed that the government is preparing for all kinds of contingencies and pledged to strengthen cooperation with other countries at this time of great uncertainty surrounding North Korea. Lawmakers asked a lot of questions about the whereabouts of Chang Seung-tek's wife, Kim Kyung-hee, who is also Kim Jong-un's aunt, as well as information on Kim Jong-un's wife, Ri Seol-ju, and other high-ranking officials. The unification minister said he does not have detailed information on them, but he pledged to keep an eye on the situation in North Korea. Meanwhile, ruling party uh, chairman Hwang Woo-yeo called for calm and pledged to harness South Korea's resources to keep an eye on the North and respond to any contingencies. Democratic Party floor leader Chan Byung-han said Chang's execution has once again revealed the brutality of the North Korean regime and called for the nation, the government, to reaffirm its military readiness. Back to you, Kan Young. All right, thanks, Yeonji, for that. That was our Kim Yeonji reporting live from Seoul's National Assembly. Meanwhile, the South Korean government prepares for any possible provocative acts by the North. Experts warn that Chang's execution could lead to heightened tensions on the Korean peninsula. Arirang News Unification Ministry correspondent Hwang Sang-hee reports. Following news of the execution of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's uncle, Chang sung tae on Friday, South Korea's Unification Ministry released a statement vowing to prepare against any possible actions by the North. The South Korean government is closely following the situation unfolding in North Korea with deep concern and will calmly prepare against any possibilities. Moreover, the government will also work closely with related countries and our allies. The South Korean government held an emergency security meeting straight after the North's announcement of Chang's execution. Experts say Chang's complete removal is an attempt by his nephew to consolidate his status as the one and only ruler of the regime, adding the young leader may have felt threatened by his uncle's supporters. Chang was killed less than a week after he was arrested, and experts say his swift execution shows that Kim will quickly root out anyone who gets in his way, meaning more purgings could be on the way. And Chang's execution may lead to fresh tensions on the Korean peninsula, as North Korea has launched provocations as a means of maintaining internal unity in the past. Experts say that if the members of the six-party denuclearization talks do not accept Pyongyang's proposal for unconditional talks, it may heighten tensions by next spring, in time for an annual joint military exercise between Seoul and Washington. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. Now, South Korean Defense Minister Kim Guan-jin says the execution of North Korea's number two, Chang Song-tek, could lead to further provocations from the reclusive state. Speaking before the National Defense Committee at the Parliament on this Friday, Kim said Seoul will strengthen its combat readiness against Pyongyang in conjunction with U.S. forces and keep a close eye on the internal situation in North Korea. The minister added that, however, that the nation's combat posture will not be raised as there are no notable activities within the North Korean military at this time. And foreign media outlets are also reporting on the death of Chang Song Tech. Our Kim Min Ji has more on the international reaction. The United States said it is following the developments in North Korea after the news early Friday that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's uncle, Chang song tae had been executed. Patrick Ventral, deputy spokesman for the White House Security Council, said that if confirmed, the execution is another example of the North's extreme brutality, adding that the U.S. is consulting with allies in the region. Chang's execution comes less than a week after he was arrested and removed from a Workers' Party session by armed guards. China's state-run Xinhua News Agency also reported on the execution, which could impact bilateral ties between the two countries in the future. Chang made several official visits to Beijing and was known to have a good relationship with Chinese officials. China has yet to issue an official statement on the incident, but it has strengthened security across its border with the North to guard against possible mass defections from Pyongyang. 
And over in Tokyo, the Japanese government said that it is keeping a close eye on the movements in North Korea and will continue with its information gathering activities. The Japanese media, like other outlets around the globe, are reporting that it seems the young leader is trying to consolidate his status as the sole ruler of the regime ahead of the second anniversary of the death of his father, Kim Jong il, on December 17th. Kim Min Ji, Arirang News. So, what exactly is going on in North Korea? What's behind the once powerful uncle's execution and what are its implications? Well, joining me live in the studio is Dr. Kim Byung Ju, head of KLMP Consulting, and of course, our regular commentator on this program. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Kim. Good afternoon. Now, what do we read into the speed and the level of publicity uh, in prosecution and execution of once the, the powerful number two of North Korea, Chang Song Tech? Mm, I think that's a very fair question because uh, I, for one, uh, personally was not surprised by the fact that he was executed, but very much surprised by the, as you mentioned, the speed and the publicity of this case that came out early today. Uh, in terms of speed of execution, uh, speed of uh, prosecution and execution itself, uh, I think I sense, and many other uh, North Korean experts uh, seem to sense, a uh, sense of uh, hurriedness in a way, uh, you know, Kim, Kim Jong-un kind of hurrying the overall process. And what that may indicate is uh, Chang Sung Tech's power base among the elites. If they had kept him alive any longer, uh, he and his close associates, I don't, we don't even know who now Kim Jong-un's close associates are, but may have felt that there is a risk. So they may have heard this one very much. And uh, as you mentioned, the openness or the publicity of it, I think it give, gives, uh, raises a lot of questions about this, what it, regarding what it means. First of all, more straightforward uh, kind of on the surface kind of answer would be that it tells us North Korea is a very much traditional society. So when a uh, young man actually acts to kill his uncle, uh, you need lots of justifications. So indeed, they, get, they came out pouring out all these details, which they don't, uh, which don't even really like match with one another and which lacks a lot of logic behind it indeed but had to came, come up with this last really wordy statement about why he was guilty and deserved this kind of execution I think and uh, one additional point was it's just obvious that this was a statement of warning to other the rest of the elites about what could actually mean if one rises against the the one man rule by the Kim family itself. So I think the, the speed, as you mentioned, speed and, and the publicity of the announcement it itself uh, tells us a lot of uh, message or gives us, uh, you know, offers us a lot of points to be uh, pondered upon. Now, uh, according to that statement released uh, mm -hmm. by the Korea Central News Agency, mm -hmm. the statement of accusations against Chang Song Tik is very lengthy. Mm -hmm. It's about 2,700 words. Right. Now, uh, what should we know in the uh, what should we note in the final charges announced? First things that I notice, as I mentioned, uh, there are a lot of points that do not seem to make really sense in terms of uh, you know logical thinking here. First of all, one of the points in the statement said that Chang Song Tik was trying to become the cabinet. Uh, prime Minister. The cabinet Prime Minister, they already have Park bong in place, and Park bong is reportedly a Chang Song Baek, Chang Song Tech's uh, you know, follower in a way, and it's actually a lower position. Chang Song Tech has been in, in uh, charge, officially in charge of the administration part of the party, which actually deals with all these intelligence reports and all that kind of stuff. And he was for a long time, for seven years, in charge of the personnel affair, affairs. Uh, where he actually had the power to appoint key military positions and all the elites in the North Korean society. But him becoming a, a cabinet prime minister itself is kind of like a moving toward a lower position in terms of real mm -hmm. power, the way we see it right at this point. So that's kind of like a lot of this, that's not the only point, but a lot of these points seem to really lack a logic behind it. And what it may actually uh, indicate to us is uh, uh, what the statement was saying that was that he was planning a treason there and what it seems to be telling us is that probably he was trying to uh, find an alternative to Kim Jong-un himself. That could be Kim Jong-nam, of course. And there was uh, certain communications between uh, Chang Song Tag and Beijing, perhaps, with regard to Kim Jong-nam as the alternative case of kind of like uh, replacing the leadership and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
uh, th that seems to be in behind the statement when they're talking about the, you know toppling the leadership and going against the leadership rule and standing in or intervening the succession and all that kind of stuff. So w what I smell or what I sense is Kim Jong Nam's presence there. Not that Kim Jong Nam is a real power player, but Jang Sung Tae uh, using Kim Jong Nam as a like a political uh, you know like a, you know. I don't know, the, the, the uh, surface of a mask of his new uh, power structure and all that. So very interesting. And additionally, if I may mention, may, may mention one of the things that seems to lack a consistency and a long-term planning in this statement itself is about Chang, a charge against Chang Sung Nam saying that he was trying to rent this land in uh, Nasan area for 50 years. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of indication in the future North Korea may actually face difficulty, even if it wants, to open their economy any further with this statement printed in in this indictment. So uh, lack of planning in and offering the statement itself and lack of logic itself in pre uh, preparing this statement, meaning that this was indeed prepared in a hurry. Right, Kim Jong-nam, of course, is the older brother of uh, Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Of course, they uh, share the same father, Kim Jong-il. However, right. they have different mothers. Right. Kim Jong-nam um, is actually the eldest son of Kim Jong-il. However, was not handpicked as a successor right. of um, Kim Jong-il. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, like you said, it, lack, it looks to be lacking preparation mm -hmm. and time. And some experts have pointed out that this could mean that um, just hint at the fact that Kim Jong-un is actually young and immature and emotional. Now, what do we see in Kim Jong-un's style of leadership uh, shown in this case? In this case here, it seems to be showing this young leader is actually insecure. Uh, you know, judging all these things that are being aired through this statement itself, he's extremely insecure and he's not really shrewd, uh, which is a big contrast against his father's style. His father always was very careful about his words and didn't say much and all that kind of stuff. And North Korea didn't really issue all these kind of statements before, but uh, this really wordy statement, as I mentioned before, and uh, this could actually go along with the overall observation of his uh, leadership style that we have seen so far for the last two years. He would be a person who would in, uh, invite Dennis Rodman and talk about <laughs> this Western style U.S. basketball on one hand, and then again, you know, talking about this tradition of observing the leadership in this statement and all that kind of stuff. So very uh, lack of consistency and uh, emotional in a way and whimsical, which only seem to highlight the uh, indication that, that he's uh, immature and he lacks uh, experience. So uh, what, what are the risks that we see in the future uh, process of North Korea's handling of, uh, you know, of the disclosure of this case through mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. uh, further consolidation of uh, political power uh, within the regime? You know, what we know, uh, the immediate uh, outcome of this action that was announced to this morning is its uh, reign of terror. Uh, it's creating a lot of fear among the North Korean elites. And what that means is, by creating fear, you don't really secure loyalty. What you, what you end up with is uh, a lot of people trying to cover their own safety and their own survival. Meaning that actually, what we need in, in North Korea is actually stability and rational thinking. But the thing is, in this kind of reign of terror, rational thinking may actually lose its ground. And this young leader who's not even 30 in his age at this point may actually make these kind of decisions while the more experienced and more rational brains could actually stay away from his important decisions. So indeed, uh, this actually increases a lot of risk in a way and uh, actually reduces rationality in terms of the decisions that we could expect from Pyongyang uh, coming down the road. So uh, this is an unsettling situation. Uh, now, um, as for Seoul's preparation for, um, you know, for coming North Korea-related uncertainties, what should we note of that? Uh, you know, we, it has been already covered in our previous reports here about the, what was happening in the National Assembly and various kinds of committees and as well as Chongwa there this morning with the National Security Council meeting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what we seem to be confirming is the uh, South Korean government is very, very carefully watching this situation at this point. And hopefully, I think they will be in connect. Uh, close consultation with uh, powers like Beijing and Washington at this point. Especially, personally, I'm sensing there has been some kind of role by Beijing 
being played before this thing happened in Pyongyang at this point in conjunction with Kim Jong-nam and Jang sung and all that. So I th I'm waiting for Beijing's official word that could come out anytime soon. And then again, uh, even beyond those official words, uh, I think the communication and coordination with Beijing will be a critical matter that South Korean government will have to focus on. That's my personal view. All right. A lot of speculation at this point, as always, mm -hmm. um, in terms of North Korea. Right. And uh, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out and how this will impact inter-Korean relations and North Korea's policy towards the outside world. Right, that's for sure. All right, Dr. Kim byung ji thank you so much for today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With rapid changes in the global economy, up-to-date business and financial news has never been more essential. See what's making markets tick around the globe. We speak to the experts and cover the biggest financial stories. North Korea provocation. Quite good. We received a lot of positive feedback. Well, it looks like the Kaesong Industrial Complex has not been affected by the news of Chang Song Tech's execution. A 30 member G20 delegation is scheduled to visit the joint factory zone next week. Seoul's Unification Ministry said Friday that about 30 officials from international financial organizations, like the Group of 20, will cross the border to the north on Thursday afternoon, where they will receive a briefing on the joint business park and tour the factories and facilities there. The officials will be in South Korea for a two-day visit for the G20 Seoul conference. The Unification Ministry said the upcoming visit aims to broaden the officials' understanding, which could help bring foreign investment to the Kaesong complex and ultimately contribute to its globalization. Meanwhile, earlier today, a special parliamentary committee adopted a resolution demanding Japan to stop its push for collective self-defense, which allows Tokyo to use force in case of an attack on an ally. The Korean lawmakers in the committee, which was set up to counter attempts to distort history by countries in Northeast Asia, say that Tokyo's push for collective self-defense goes against its constitution and that it is aimed at military rearmament. The resolution urges Japan to move away from efforts to deny or glorify its imperialistic past. Now, specifically, it demands that Tokyo accept its legal liability for the Korean victims of sexual slavery during World War II and offer compensation. The resolution also calls on Japan to stop making false claims to the Korea-controlled Tokdo Islets. Meanwhile, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe discussed the current tensions in the East China Sea triggered by China's sudden announcement of a new air defense ID zone last month. In a phone call made on Thursday, U.S. time, the two leaders reportedly agreed on the importance of security cooperation between the U.S., Japan and South Korea. Biden reaffirmed that the U.S. does not recognize China's air defense zone, as he stated during his visit to China, Japan and Korea earlier this month, reiterating that the zone will have no effect on U.S. military operations in the East China Sea. He also offered continued U.S. support for efforts to reduce regional tensions, including those between Korea and Japan. Now, on the trade front, a top U.S. trade official has cast a dark cloud over Korea's prospects for joining the U.S.-led Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. Speaking at a forum in Washington on Thursday, Acting Deputy U.S. Trade Representative Wendy Cutler said it would be, quote, very difficult for any country, including Korea, to join the ongoing negotiations given the current timetable. The deal is expected to be completed early next year. Now, Korea announced it would consider joining the TPP late last month. She also said Korea should resolve pending issues with the Korea U.S. FTA before joining the TPP, raising the possibility that the U.S. may ratchet up pressure on Seoul to fully implement the bilateral trade pact. Now, back here in this country, medical corporations in Korea will soon be able to set up subsidiaries as part of the government's efforts to promote investment. Now, until now, only university hospitals were allowed to do this. The Finance Ministry announced Friday that during a meeting presided over by President Park Geun-hye, that 850 medical corporations will be allowed to expand their businesses to the sectors of accommodation, tourism and medical tourism, and the development of medicine, cosmetics and health food. 
President Park said the best way to promote investment without increasing spending is to ease regulations and urge government officials to do just that, leaving only the regulations that are truly necessary. And turning to the railway strike that is now into its fifth day, state-run railway firm Corail says all train services, including the high-speed KTX, could be affected by the unionized action starting early next week. Corail's management issued an ultimatum on this Friday saying that if striking workers do not return to work by the end of the day, they will be removed from their positions. Over a third of Corail's workforce, some 8,300 people are on strike, most suspended from their positions without pay. The KTX is currently running normally, but most regular train services, including Semaul and Mugunghwa, are running on restricted schedules, while freight services are running at just 30 percent of normal levels. The union launched the strike on Monday to protest Corail's plan to establish an affiliate for a new KTX line. Now, it thinks the plan will eventually lead to the privatization of Corail, mass job losses and fare hikes. And Korean shares slipped to their lowest close in three months on this Friday, extending their losing streak to four days as strong U.S. retail sales data added to expectations that the Federal Reserve could begin its stimulus trimming as early as next week. Now, at the closing bell, the benchmark Kospi was down 0.3 percent, ending the day at 1963, while the Tekevi Kosdag was also down by just about that much. On the foreign exchange counter, the Korean currency closed weaker against the greenback at roughly 1,053 won. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching and we'll be back with more on Early Edition at 6.